Welcome to Thousand Dollar Car Guy. My name's Andrew, and for the last 14 years I've been buying and selling cheap cars. It started out as a hobby, but it has become an addiction. Addiction, 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 addiction. You may own something amazing every now and then, but you always come back to what you know best. And for me, that's cheap cars. Follow me as I turn my addiction into profit. Buying a cheap car, putting a few bucks into it, and flipping it for huge profit. Imagine wheeler dealers, chasing classic cars, and mighty car mods all rolled into one and forced to work on a budget of $1,000. Welcome to Thousand Dollar Car Guy. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Thousand Dollar Car Guy. Today is going to be more like the original format of the show. That's why it had the different intro and everything. And we're getting back into cheap cars. So I bought the cheapest car I've ever bought ever in my life, which is saying something, for $250. It's not the cheapest car out there, but it is the cheapest, best running, most reliable. Now I know that $250 may not seem all that cheap, but remember this is a running, driving, complete car for $250. Now remember, the scrapyard only pays you $200 bucks for a running, driving, complete car right now. Anyway, let's get on to the specs. V6, six-speed manual transmission, two-door, two-wheel drive. That's right, it's a Hyundai Tiburon. Yay! She's still wet from her shower this morning. We should probably wait for that to dry. Huh, there we are. So that's a little bit better. You guys can see more of what's going on here. It has a power moonroof that leaks. The interior is pretty filthy, but it does come with a tremendous amount of change all over. Once I clean it out and collect up all the change, I will let you know, of course, how much we got. Paint isn't terrible. There's just a bunch of fading. Um, it's very familiar with like the Mazdas. It looks exactly like the same amount of fade that they get. So you can see more of it up here. In general though, it feels just like sandpaper. On the driver's side, we got some obliterated bolstering and some more change, as you can see. I didn't stage this. I would never do such a thing. Ooh, look, popcorn. Guessing these are floor mats. Ooh, a pen. Uh, some random wires. Oh. Half a pen. Some wires. I don't know. Uh, some wires. I don't know. Probably for like a speaker or something, maybe? I checked the other side, but there isn't one there either. Oh, one thing that's super weird on these cars, reverse. It actually has a lockout. You gotta pull it up and go over into reverse. That's weird, like Volkswagens you push down and it's up to the left. Also, Yep. Stereo works. It keeps flashing different colors. I don't know what's up with that. AC doesn't work. Underneath the hood. Ooh, papers. Okay. Okay. Ow. Okay. I thought I heard change come out. I'm thinking it was just nails. I don't know if the tires are low or just low profile. The car sits tremendously low. Like, my kneecap is basically the same height as the hood. That's pretty low. <laughs> Gas struts, sort of work. New, gigantic battery. We might have to save this. Intake, that's not connected. HIDs, or something. Oh, ah. The hood just fell on me. Yeah, they sort of work. HIDs that work sometimes. Uh, sometimes they flicker and don't work. Sometimes they don't flicker and they do work. Ooh, looks like a leaking power steering fluid. Oh, there it goes. Well, I mean, we really didn't need to see any more underneath there. Ooh, I should show you one of my favorite parts. How do you get into the trunk? Maybe. Now well, let's get the key. So, in the trunk, my favorite thing so far is this warning of that guy getting smashed in the head from the rear deck. <laughs> I don't know why that's my favorite part. Speaker hole, maybe, that does nothing. Yep, oh, I'm not really sure what else to say about this car. It runs, drives, it stops. We got it for super cheap, which is always welcome. And I think it's just back to the old quick flip a -rooney. Um the only thing I do want to address is the ABS. So this thing has a weird pulsing 
when you go to a, come to a stop, basically the ABS is trying to lock it up at all times. Could be low on fluid, could be a bunch of things. Could be a fuse, maybe it's so low that it rubbed through the brake sensor and it chopped it off and now the computer's freaking out about it. But I have to say, I mean, as far as cheap cars go, it's cheap. If they had made these things rear wheel drive back in the day, game changer. It would have just been like this cheap ship box that anybody could have bought and went drifting with. But no, they made it front wheel drive and they all died a horrible, horrible death. These things are going for like max 1500 bucks, I think, on Marketplace. I'm really not looking to get any more than 500 bucks out of it. Anyway, I guess we'll start cleaning and see what we end up with. So, I had to stop, uh, real quick. This is the amount of change, oh, that's gone forever. This is the amount of change I have so far. This is from doing the passenger side and the center console. Uh, still haven't added it up yet. But then I went to go do the driver's side. What the heck? So here's all the change that was collected. So we ended up with $22.09. But one very special coin is a Indian head nickel from 1923. How cool is that? That's a lot of money. So, it's a few days later and something surprising happened. I posted the Hyundai up for like 850 bucks and two hours later it was sold for 500 bucks. So we made $250, which is what we're going to be using to purchase a whole bunch of necessary things for the project cars. Uh, my truck desperately needs an oil change, so I'm gonna go buy some oil for that. The Festiva needs an oil change desperately, because I never do them in my vehicles, apparently. <laughs> so I gotta go buy some jack stands, some oil, an oil pan, a couple other little things, but we will hopefully be wrapping up the Festiva very soon. We are nearing the end of this build, and you guys should get very excited for what's coming next. It's huge. We are four episodes or so deep into it already, but stay tuned. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you on the next episode. Well, we'll see you there. Come with me, and you'll see the world of OSHA violations. <laughs>